So I just need like a, I just need a countdown and a thumbs up when we're going. Good evening. Welcome to our 6 p.m. service. I'm so glad that you're tuning in and joining us. As we begin, let's lift our voices together. Yes, you at home, I want you to lift your voice. And uh, don't worry, it's just you in the home. Nobody else is going to see you. The neighbor's dog might howl, but that'll get others' attention, and then they can hear you sing. And let's begin worshiping the Lord tonight with singing. Brother Ian's going to come and lead us in this first song. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Sing it out with me on the first and the third verses. And can it be that I should gain? Amen. That's a great song, and I hope that uh, that was an encouragement to you. Well, as we begin, let's have a word of prayer. Let's just kind of focus our hearts, focus our thoughts together on the Lord. And in just a moment, we'll sing one more song. And then right after that, uh, Brother Gabe Suarez is going to come, and he's going to bring our evening message tonight. And so let's pray for this time as we seek the Lord, and let's ask God to bless it in every heart and life. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your amazing love. Lord, thank you for the fact that when we called out unto you and received you as our Savior, our chains fell off and our heart was free. Father, thank you for uh, the wonderful hope that we have through Christ. And Father, I pray that you would strengthen our faith in Christ through this time. I pray, Lord, that you would be preeminent in it, and I pray that you would be glorified through it. And Lord, I pray that you would work in our hearts. Use Brother Suarez as he preaches. And Lord, I pray that your word would do a deep, uh, uh, life-changing work in each and every one of us. We sure love you, Lord, and we thank you for your goodness to us. We pray your blessing now upon this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessed assurance. What a great blessing that we have that Christ died for our sins. Blessed assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. 
Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. There are salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Sing it out, number three. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Well, amen. If you could, in your Bibles, Acts chapter number 2. Acts chapter number 2, and we'll be looking at uh, the last few verses there of Acts chapter number 2 and uh, verses uh, 42 to 47 there, Acts chapter number 2, and I'm excited to preach, and uh, it's been a while uh, since I was able to preach here at church, and uh, now that I get to preach, there's only six people here in the auditorium, Uh, but what a blessing it is to be behind this pulpit, and uh, since it is a special day today, uh, Valentine's Day, And um, just in front of everyone that's watching, I want to say happy Valentine's Day to my wife. And I truly do love my wife. She is the one uh, that keeps me sane. And uh, without her, I wouldn't be here. And now we have uh, just a beautiful family. And so I'm I'm truly thankful for the grace of God there. And I want to just uh, give you a quick thought. I want to keep it short uh, because uh, being that this is a pre-recorded service, Uh, I know that you can click on this timeline somewhere down here and you can see how long this video is. And so I don't want the length to deter you from watching this video, but I I, I just want to encourage you to uh, hear this message. I believe that it will be an encouragement and challenge uh, to our church family. And uh, so Acts chapter number 2, if you would, please, and starting in verse number 42. And the Bible says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers, And fear came upon every soul, and and, and many wonders and signs uh, were done by the apostles, and all that believed were were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Praising God and having favor with all people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And I, I am excited about uh, what is going on here in this passage. I, I, each time I read this, I pray that our church would be at that same spot. And of course, this is the, new, the first New Testament local church with the apostles. And uh, this is after uh, Christ gave uh, just a commission to the apostles. And there's just great things happening here in this uh, church in action, in Acts chapter number 2. And I would like to just simply give you this thought tonight on the spiritual momentum. And we'll begin with a word of prayer and we'll get right into the message. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, what you are doing in our church Uh, Thank you for using us. Thank you for uh, empowering us. Thank you, Lord, for equipping us. And, and Lord, we believe that there is a spiritual momentum here in our church. And uh, we we thank you, Lord, for using us despite of our uh, imperfection, despite of our uh, unworthiness and undeservingness. And by your grace, Lord, we are where we are. And we thank you, Lord, for that. And uh, we pray that you would continue to use us. We pray that you continue this spiritual momentum. And we love you so much, Lord. I pray that you'd fill me with your spirit. I pray for power uh, to preach. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Here in the New Testament local church in book of Acts, God is truly using them. Uh, the Bible says that there was a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind uh, that came and filled the house. The preachers were filled with cloven tongues like as of fire. They began uh, preaching in their own in, 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 the, in different languages such as the Spirit gave utterance and all the different cultures that came to this church were able to hear the preaching in their own language. I can imagine this church being filled filled with the Spirit. I can imagine just this church just being filled with the power of God and the presence of God. And I mean, if you were to walk in, if we were to go back in time and walk into this church, we can sense the Spirit of God in this place. I mean, walking into this church auditorium was probably like walking into the presence of God. I, I mean, you can just tell when a place or even a person is filled with the Spirit of God. I mean, you can tell when someone is packed with prayer and has been spending time in in God's presence, and and I can just I can just believe I can just see and imagine this church in action being that place, a place that is being used by God. And then Pastor Peter here stood up and he preached on the prophecy of Joel. He preached on the proof of Jesus and the prophecy of David, and then the power of the resurrection of Christ here in, in uh, Acts chapter number two. And the Bible says that these people were pricked in the heart. And uh, I don't know about you, but I am thankful for preaching. And because of the preaching of the Word of God, it has changed my life. And the preaching and the teaching, that's what the uh, uh, preaching and teaching does. It pricks people in the heart. And sadly today, uh, just thinking of this thought, I was reading this passage. Uh, we live in a, a society that does not... Uh, does not uh, uh, like the pricking preaching of God's word. Uh, we live in a very soft society with soft hands and soft voices, but with hard hearts. And I don't know about you, but we need the pricking preaching of God's word. And that's exactly what's happening here in the church of action. Uh, these people were pricked in the hearts. The word prick means to sting. And it stung their hearts. It means conviction. It means correction. It means cleansing. And because of the preaching of God's word, it drew them, the people here in the congregation, it drew them to make a decision. And they asked Peter, what shall we do? Then Peter went straight to that point. You must repent. You need remission of your sins and you need to receive Christ. And God used the apostles and God used this church. And this church grew from 12 people to 3,012 plus more. And this church saw an awakening. And this church saw a revival. And this church saw spiritual momentum. I mean, they were moving forward. They were seeing growth. They were seeing action. Things, great things were happening through this church. People getting saved. People getting baptized. People getting added to the church. They were moving forward. They were seeing spiritual momentum. And if we could just kind of go to a, a quick physics lesson. Momentum is a product of mass and velocity. Mass uh, is the size or the weight, and velocity is the speed. For example, if I were to take a giant boulder, and if I were to roll that boulder on, onto a, a win, uh, through a window, that would destroy that window because of the size of the boulder. If I were to take a gun, and if I were to shoot a bullet through that window, that same uh, window would be destroyed because of its speed. When you, can, when you put together the size and the speed, that creates momentum. I was with Brother Blankenship this morning. He um, picked me up to come to church this morning. I was just not able to make it with our car. Uh, but Brother, uh, Brother Blankenship mentioned as we were going up the hill, up here to East Hill, he mentioned it just takes momentum. We just need momentum to go up to the hill, go up the hill, and, and you kind of gain speed, and you go up that hill, and it takes momentum. And it's the same idea as spiritually speaking, uh, we, ha we gain momentum uh, we, uh, as we are moving forward and we go up the hill and we start seeing uh, victories here at our church, but uh, I'm not talking about physical momentum uh, with the attendance of our church or how much, uh, how much uh, performance we have. Uh, you, we don't need more performance. We don't need more production or presentation here in our church. We need more of the power of God. And here we talk about the church in action and how they were seeing spiritual momentum uh, because of, I believe, two things. It's because of their, their, the size of their faith in God and there's the speed, the direction, if you will, or the velocity of their works or uh, as they're serving the Lord. 
uh, uh, if that, uh, as, as you see the faith in, of the church in action, uh, they were because of their faith. The Bible says faith without works is dead. The Bible says, and uh, the Apostle Paul said, uh, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Uh, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. And be, because of his faith, he was serving. Because of his, the grace of God, he was moving. Because of his love for the Lord, he was uh, loving God back. He was serving him here in the church. And I can just picture the church in action. Because of their faith in God, they were serving. And they were, they were gaining spiritual momentum. And I think about our church here, East Hill Baptist Church. I believe that we have a spiritual momentum. I can see our church, and, and God is using our church. And you, you, uh, you look at our church and the ministries that's going on and how God is blessing our church. And we are seeing spiritual momentum. And we have spiritual momentum because God is using our church. Uh, not, uh, it's not by uh, our uh, gifts. It's not by our talents. It's not because uh, we have live stream or it's not because we have a 4.4 rating on Google or a 4.7 uh, rating on Facebook. It's not not because of our church staff it's not because of what we have done we have spiritual momentum because of what God is doing here at East Hill Baptist Church God by the grace of by his grace he is blessing us and he is he is using us and it's and we have uh, we have spiritual momentum I believe that revival can start here at our church I believe that God could bring revival here at our church. And if you look at our church, there's, there's great things happening. Not, uh, don't, don't, when you look at the pandemic, of course, we look at, uh, don't look at the challenges and don't look at the troubles uh, that the pandemic brought. When we look at our church, we see spiritual momentum because, the, because of the evident grace of God, because of the faithfulness of God's people. And you look at the dedication of God's people. You look at the participation of God's people. You look at the ushers. They continue to do their part. You look at the security, and they continue to do their part. You look at the nursery workers, and they continue to care for the children. The Sunday school teachers continue to teach teach their classes. The church continues to be uh, filled uh, with people. The pews and the, uh, the classes continue to be filled with, with students. And uh, you see uh, our, the production ministry continue to keep uh, the preaching and teaching of God's word moving forward. And the cleaning crews continue to clean, keep the church clean. And uh, just uh, last week we saw uh, Titus Rivers getting baptized here at our church and more that will be getting baptized in the maintenance ministry, keeping the property clean and put together and you look at the soul winners who continue to do their part every week for the sake of the gospel and you look at the church in action and how they were serving and it, we are gaining spiritual momentum because of the faithfulness of God and his people and God is blessing East Hill Baptist Church with spiritual momentum and you might be sitting here tonight and you say boy I want to be a part of what's going on at East Hill Baptist Church I want to participate I want to partake in the blessings that's going on listen East Hill Baptist Church is not a dead church having funerals every Sunday and Wednesdays we are a triumphant church that is alive and well and is filled with the power of God and we are moving forward and there's no greater uh, way to serve the Lord than inside of this church and boy there is spiritual momentum going on here at East Hill Baptist Church but there are ways that could stop a spiritual momentum and we don't want it to stop let's look at what the church in action did to keep the spiritual momentum going and pastor mentioned it even uh, this morning uh, in Acts chapter 2 verse 42 look what the Bible says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Number one, what did the church in action do to keep the spiritual momentum going as they're moving forward and God is using them and God is blessing and God is bringing in people and getting saved, baptized, added to church? What did they do? They steadfastly continued. The word steadfast in Greek is atenizo, which means to look intently at, uh, with, the, with the idea of being immovable. The word continue in the Greek is meno, which means to remain, to stay, to reside. They continued without wavering. They moved without moving. That's consistency. Uh, too often people 
stop after victory. They stop uh, their hard work when they finally uh, see their hard work pay off. They stop praying fervently and fiercely after they get their answer. It's much like an athlete uh, or uh, such as a, an athlete or a basketball player when they score a point and they celebrate too early. Listen, when we see victories here at our church, that is just the starting point. That's just the beginning. Let's continue to move forward. I think about last week and how we had our revival weekend and, and the youth revival and and I believe that God used that event and God filled it with his spirit and his presence and it all boils down to this thing of prayer and there was spiritual momentum that we can feel that has been pushed and has been encouraged here at our church and we've got to keep that spiritual momentum going every single day. We've got to continue steadfastly. We want to see God use our church. Let's not celebrate too early. Let's not stop what we're doing. Let's continue to move forward. And let's continue, uh, number one, in the preaching of God's word. The Bible says here, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. That doctrine, the word doctrine means teaching. As the teaching and preaching, the, uh, the apostles were, uh, were teaching and preaching the word of God. Let's continue in God's word. Let's continue uh, being uh, uh, in God's word and absorbing God's word and taking heed to the preaching and teaching of God's word and every, every Sunday and every Wednesday and when we, whenever we get the chance we hear the teaching and preaching of God's word and we, we ought to uh, take heed to it and obey it and absorb it. Let's continue steadfastly in the preaching of God's word. Aren't you thankful for preaching tonight? Not only did they continue steadfastly in preaching, they continued steadfastly in participation. Uh, the word fellowship, it means participation. Uh, aren't you thankful that we are a part of a church that has fellowship? And let's participate in as much as we can here at this church as we serve, as we see ministries uh, moving forward. Let's participate. If you have not uh, gotten involved in a ministry, boy, can I just encourage you, get involved. Get involved with what God's doing here. And as you see these volunteers coming in and serving, and as you see these ministries moving forward, listen, we're not doing it for any acclamation. We're not doing it for any appreciation. We're not doing it for any applaud. We're doing it because of the love of Jesus Christ, and we're doing it because of the grace of God, and we're doing it out of the abundance of the heart because of his faithfulness. And when we look at God's faithfulness, we, know, we want to be faithful to him. Let's participate in what God is doing, but also in partaking. Look at the verse number 42. It says there, and uh, the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread. Now, breaking of bread, I was trying to uh, just really study that and figure out, boy, what, is, what does that mean? And breaking of bread is food. And uh, boy, I don't know about you, but I love fellowship over food. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a biblical thing, fellowship over food. And uh, what I love even more is fellowship over some sushi. So if there's anyone here at our church that loves sushi, I, know there's, I think Brother Blankenship loves sushi. But if you love sushi, let us know so we can do some breaking of bread together. But when I look at the word breaking of bread, and whenever we see that in the Bible, I think of partaking. I think of uh, being a part, uh, partaking, uh, breaking of bread. And uh, when you are participating here in the ministry, listen, you're going to partake in the blessings of God. When you see someone get saved, you get to partake in the blessings of seeing someone get saved. When you see someone get baptized, you get to partake in the blessing of seeing someone get baptized. You know, listen, there's nothing greater than seeing someone get saved. And not only that, but seeing their life change. And when you look at that person and you see, boy, I partook in that. I got to be a part of that. I got to talk to that person. I got to lead that person to Christ. I got to partake in his changed life. And listen, that's, there's, a, there's, there's a great blessing in that and seeing lives change through this ministry. And you want to partake in that. Not only did they continue steadfastly in the preaching, in the participation, in the, part, uh, the partaking, but I believe that this is one of the most important things, and that's prayer. And the Bible says here, uh, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Prayer changes everything. Prayer changes everything. Charles Spurgeon said, uh, he said, prayer is a slender nerve that moves the hand 
of the omnipotence. A prayerful church is a powerful church. And listen, we can stand behind this pulpit and we can teach in all our Sunday school classes the five ways of how to build a better relationship. Or we can plan any kind of event uh, here at our church and we can organize and put things on the calendar and we can do all of these the logistics and we can, uh, we can try to follow these simple steps or lists of how to have a better Christian life. But listen, if prayer is missing, all of that would be in vain. All of it would go to fail because prayer is the fuel. Prayer is the source, and we need prayer. We need more prayer. Uh, we, we cannot have enough prayer here at our church, and if we look at that event last week, and, and I'm just, I just so, we're just excited about what God did, uh, especially in our youth revival here, and you look at that event, and you can look at the organization, and you can look at all the, the, all the things that happened, the games, and, and re- all of it was all of the all, all that happened last week on Saturday can boil down to this one thing and that's prayer. It's the prayer of God's people. It's God coming down and using us. Not only did they steadfastly continue, but look at verse number 44. The Bible says, and all that believed were together and had all things in common. How to keep that spiritual momentum going to steadfastly continue but also to serve corporately. Uh, they, they had, they, and all that believed were together and had all things in common. Listen, our church, we are, we, uh, there is no perfect church. But our church, we are just a bunch of imperfect people serving a perfect God. And because of His grace, He is using us. And we are moving toward a direction. Listen, we don't want to be just a stagnant church just to exist. We are a church that is moving forward. We have a direction, and we have that destination in mind. And as a church, uh, to keep the spiritual momentum going, let's continue to serve corporately. And not only that, number ver- verse 45, and I hasten here, the Bible says, And sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. They surrendered completely. I mean, everything that they had was surrendered. They sold all of their possessions. Their all was on the altar. They sold all that they had. The world, This world and the things of this world showed no more importance to them. And it's amazing when you talk to a person who just recently got saved, it's amazing how the things of this world is, no impo- is not important to them anymore, how their values have changed, how their desires have changed, how, uh, how uh, their direction has changed. And these people here, they got saved and they surrendered. They surrendered completely. It's amazing what happens to us when we get saved. We no longer care of the things of this world. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. Uh, My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Are you tonight, are you thoroughly surrendered to God? We have, we heard so much about surrender from Dr. Getch, but are we truly surrendered? Are our finances surrendered? Are our families surrendered? Is our future surrendered? Is our health surrendered? The more we give up to God, the more God gives down to us. Is our all on the altar? Not only did they uh, surrender completely, but they showed consistency. They showed consistency. Verse 46, And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. They continued daily. There was consistency. Uh, that word singleness of heart, that word singleness means sincerity. Listen, they didn't just, show, they didn't just say Uh, They didn't just talk about being spiritual. They didn't just say uh, what they did. They were showing it. They had action. Uh, What they taught uh, was what they lived. They weren't just simply talking, but they were doing. And I don't know about you. I don't want to just talk about doing great things for God. I want to do great things for God. I don't want to just talk about soul winning. I want to go soul winning. I don't want to just talk about, uh, I don't want to just talk about serving. I want to serve. There's consistency, not only daily, but consistency with what they taught and preached with their lives. Not only that, but they were lastly spiritually consumed. They were spiritually consumed. Verse 47 says, Praising God and having favor with all men, and with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. I think of spiritual because uh, it's possible for a church to be carnal. 
It is very possible for a church to be carnal. If I could remind you of the church of Corinth, where the Bible says, ye are carnal. Listen, uh, we don't want to be a carnal church. We want to be a spiritual church. And these people, the church in action, they gave, they were careful to give the glory and praise to God. They weren't doing what they did for their acclamation, for their praise. They're doing it to give God the glory, to give the praise to God. And as they are right with God, and they love God, as we heard this morning. They praise God. They're right horizontally. They had it right vertically. When we are spiritual, when we are right with God, we will be right with each other. They had favor with all the people. Listen, we want to give God all the glory. We want to, uh, we want to be spiritual. And then lastly, in the last part of verse 47, it says there, And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And this is our prayer. I pray that we'd be at that spot. I pray that East Hill Baptist Church could be the church where the Lord adds to it daily such as should be saved. I'm just a young preacher who wants to see God <clears throat> do great things in this ministry. I want God to use East Hill Baptist Church more than ever before since 1957 if we would keep the spiritual momentum going up the hill up the mountain we will see God do great and mighty things through our church but it's very possible for our spiritual momentum to be hindered and stop persecution can hinder spiritual momentum look what happened in chapter 4 when Peter but Peter when he was uh, faced with persecution he didn't let that hinder the spiritual momentum problems in the church can hinder spiritual momentum such as strife divisions or gossip can hinder spiritual momentum even people can uh, hinder spiritual momentum. People who have the wrong influence. Uh, people who aren't taking the word of God seriously. People who aren't sober and aren't vigilant. People can be a hindrance to our spiritual momentum. And we ought to keep our spiritual momentum going. Guard our spiritual momentum. And we will see down the road as we continue this spir the spiritual momentum, God will use our church. God will do great and mighty things which we don't even know. And we want to keep this spiritual momentum going. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing at our church. And uh, I pray, Lord, that you would continue to use us. I pray that your grace would continue to be upon us. Help us, Lord, to continue to move forward. Give us that desire. Give us that zeal. Give us that, uh, that fire, Lord, uh, to keep the momentum going, Lord. Help us to have revival on a consistent basis. We thank you so much for what you're doing here. Uh, keep us on your path. Keep us in your will, please. In Jesus' name, amen. The, uh, at the closing, before you kind of move off to the next thing, just take some time uh, with those that are around you, uh, your spouse, your family, and maybe just have a time of reflection and uh, a time of prayer. Make a decision on what we've heard tonight. Uh, don't let the spiritual momentum die off and come to a halt. Let's continue to see it move forward, and I believe God can do great things. Well, right now, let's take a moment before we close down the service and let's see what's coming up in the coming days here at our church. Join us for our first Ladies Bible Study of the Year on February 20th at 1130 a.m. We look forward to continuing our study on the series, The Choice is Yours. On February 28th, during our evening service, we will be having a baby dedication for a church family. Mark 10, 13 says, And they brought young children to him, that he should touch them. This will be an important time of dedicating your children to the Lord. If you have children within the age of newborn to five years old and would like to participate, see one of the staff. Come and be encouraged. Thank you for joining us today. If there's any events that you would like to sign up for, or if you have any prayer requests or needs, please feel free to visit the welcome table in the lobby, give our church office a call, or email us at info at easthillbaptist.org. We look forward to gathering together for our Life Stage classes this Wednesday at 7 p.m. We will see you there. Well, I hope you've had a wonderful Valentine's Day. Let me challenge you with this thought. Don't let the emphasis of love be just on Valentine's Day alone. 
Let's focus on loving God and loving one another as we go throughout this week and beyond. Lord willing, we'll be having our uh, life stage classes this Wednesday at 7 p.m. And uh, I think the snow will be all be melted by then. And so we're looking forward to that time, getting into God's house, getting together in our small groups to pray, study the Bible, to be refreshed and encouraged. And so don't miss that opportunity. And you can go to our website if you'd like to find out more about our life stages and enroll in one that's right for you. And if you're new and would like to do that, we encourage you to do that. Well, it's been a wonderful day. Let's have one final word of prayer and thank the Lord for this time. Father, we thank you for our time to hear from your word. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to carry these truths with us. And Lord, help us to never be the hindrance to the spiritual momentum that you bring. And Father, I pray that we would be surrendered to you. Father, I pray that you would just bless and keep and provide for uh, our church family and for those that are tuning into this service. May you bless them in a special way. Guide us through this week. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to be faithful to you. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for your love for us. And we pray your blessing now as we dismiss. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. We'll see you next time.